Today, we're going to dive into an important topic, DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ or in situ. We'll cover what DCIS is, how it presents, how it's treated and what the chances of survival are. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Dr. Tasha and I'm a breast surgeon here to help you understand more about health in general and breast cancer specifically. First, let's discuss what DCIS is. DCIS stands for ductal carcinoma in situ. It's a non-invasive type of breast cancer, which means that the cancer cells are confined to the milk ducts and have not spread into the surrounding breast tissue. So how does DCIS present? DCIS actually normally doesn't cause any symptoms, which is why it's usually detected on mammograms, such as through breast screening. It may present with microcalcification. Microcalcifications on a mammogram can be an early sign of DCIS. These are chalk-like deposits that we can see on the mammogram. Microcalcification is not, however, uncommon, and they can either be benign or malignant, and they will have specific features that we can see on the mammogram. Bloody or clear nipple discharge can be a symptom of DCIS, although this is not that common. Although less common, sometimes DCIS can present with a lump, and in these cases, we call it mass-forming DCIS. How about the diagnosis? Well, if DCIS is suspected, your healthcare provider will conduct a series of tests, including a mammogram and a breast biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. Biopsies can either be done by an ultrasound scan or with mammographic guidance. And usually it is with mammographic guidance, as, as I said before, it's usually seen on the mammogram. And once the diagnosis is reached, then we can start treatment. So what are the treatment options? Unlike invasive breast cancer, as I mentioned before, DCIS does not have the ability to spread to other parts of the body. The mainstay of treatment is therefore surgery. Unlike invasive cancer, where chemotherapy can be a treatment option prior to surgery, for example, the goal of treatment is to remove the cancer and therefore the options are, number one, lumpectomy. This is also known as a wide local excision. This involves removing the DCIS with a good margin of healthy breast tissue around it. As DCIS is not usually palpable, we need to localize the cancer to help the surgeon find it and ultimately remove it. We can localize it with either a wire or another form of localizing method, such as a magnetic seed, for example. The surgery is then often followed by radiation therapy to lower the risk of recurrence. The second option is a mastectomy with or without reconstruction. In some cases, especially if the DCIS is widespread, a mastectomy may be recommended. This involves removal of the entire breast. Now people ask me, if DCIS is non-invasive and it's confined to the breast and doesn't have the ability to spread to other parts of the body, then why treat it at all? And that is a very good question actually. There are a number of reasons why at the moment we are treating DCIS with surgery. Number one is the risk of progression. While DCIS is non-invasive, meaning the cancer cells are confined to the milk ducts and have not spread into surrounding breast tissue or other parts of the body, it can progress over time, potentially. Some cases of DCIS can develop into invasive breast cancer, where cancer cells break through the duct walls and potentially spread. At the moment, we can't say for sure which cases of DCIS will do this, and so the risk of progression is unknown. And therefore, number two, there is a degree of uncertainty. Because at the moment, we can't predict which cases of DCIS will progress to invasive cancer and which ones will not. And therefore, medical professionals typically recommend treatment to reduce the risk of progression. Number three is quality of life. If DCIS is left untreated, it may progress, and if it becomes quite extensive, then this can lead to the need of surgery, namely a mastectomy. And this can have a significant impact on a person's physical as well as emotional well-being. Treating DCIS with a less aggressive approach, such as a lumpectomy and radiation, may preserve the breast as well as the quality of life. Number four is reducing recurrence. Treating DCIS lowers the risk of local recurrence, that is cancer coming back in the same breast, usually within the same locality. 
It also reduces the need for more extensive treatments. And these treatments can include additional surgery, chemotherapy, or more aggressive cancer treatments if DCIS progresses to invasive cancer. Number five is patient choice. Treatment decisions should of course always be made with full consideration of the patient's preference, values, and specific circumstances. While some individuals may choose not to treat low-risk DCIS, others may prefer active management to minimize the potential risks. And of course, lastly, there are medical guidelines. And national and international guidelines currently recommend treating DCIS to reduce the risk of progression as well as recurrence. Healthcare providers follow these guidelines to ensure the best possible outcomes for patients. So what is the risk of recurrence following surgery for DCIS? This actually varies depending on several factors, including the extent of DCIS, the type of surgery performed, and the specific characteristics of that DCIS itself. It's important to note that while the risk of recurrence exists, many individuals with DCIS remain disease-free after treatment. Here are some general considerations. Number one is the extent of DCIS. The size and extent can impact the risk of recurrence. Smaller, lower grade DCIS are associated with a lower risk of recurrence compared to larger, high grade DCIS. Number two is the type of surgery. The type of surgery performed is a significant factor. Lampectomy, which is breast conserving surgery, followed by radiation therapy is a common treatment approach for DCIS. The combination of lumpectomy and radiation reduces the risk of local recurrence. Mastectomy is associated with a very low risk of local recurrence, but may not be necessary for all cases of DCIS. Number three is margin status. Adequate surgical margins are important, and if there are cancer cells present at the edges or the margins of the tissue removed during surgery, the risk of recurrence increases and surgeons aim for a clear or negative margins to reduce this risk. Number four is the grade. The histological grade of DCIS can influence the risk of recurrence. Low grade DCIS are generally associated with a lower risk. Number five, radiation therapy. If a lumpectomy is performed, radiation therapy is often recommended, and this helps reduce the risk of recurrence in that breast. So what are the chances of survival? The prognosis is excellent with a five-year survival rate of nearly 100% because it's non-invasive. However, the risk of recurrence or progression to invasive breast cancer can vary based on the factors such as the grade and extent of disease as well as the treatment received. After treatment, regular follow-up is essential to monitor for any signs of recurrence. It's also important to maintain a healthy lifestyle including a balanced diet, regular exercise, as well as routine breast self-examination. I hope that's helpful and I'll see you in the next one.